So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to code, how to output, and how to script for lineup analysis. Now there's a lot involved with lineup analysis, it's not super easy to explain, so I'm just going to try my best. And the first part of that is coding for lineup analysis. So to code for lineup analysis, you need to code for two things. You need to code for the players on the court, and you need to code for the position outcome. Now, the other part of this is that's really important is they've all got to be in the same instance. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to script later. So this is my code window. Now there's a full walkthrough of this code window. There's a design video for this code, um, code window, and I'll put those in the description below. But um, just to kind of do you a quick, uh, quick uh, notes version of this out code window, I get to select my players over here on the player matrix. So I'll select these five players. You know, if there's other players down here, I'd select them. But I just put my one player in there. So I've selected my five players. And those have showed up on my main uh, code window face. Now, just to the right of the code window, I've got my players here as well. Now, that's just using, um, you know, a button mimic uh, script. So it's just saying get the button name from this button ID and replicate that name. So player01, that's the button ID of this player over here. So it's replicating that name, cook green over here, cook green over there. So I've got my five label buttons. Now, you won't be able to see it when I turn on my links. No, absolutely not. But there is five activation links between this offense button and these five labels. Same with this defense button and these five labels. So anytime I press offense or defense, these five buttons activate. Now you see that if I just go into code mode now, I click offense, all five will activate, and defense, all five will activate. So that puts all five of those player names inside my offense and defensive instances. Now that's when, you know, I'm coding the game. If I'm on offense, I select my five players. I click, you know, May 2, catch and shoot 2, uncontested, left elbow. Now that May 2 label, because of, you know, of the way that my code window is designed, will also be in this instance. So when I click over here and put in the sorter, you'll see that I have all five of my players one, two, three, four, five, as well as the shot result. All in my, well, Rams offense um, rows. So I've got my players and my shot result all in the same instance. So that means when I script for this later, I can easily kind of, you know, identify what outcomes go with what players. So that's part one of coding and scripting for lineup analysis. So part two of coding and scripting for lineup analysis is this very important scripting concept. So there's two way to script labels. There's a scripting without the word label and scripting with the word label, and they do two very different things. So here are my um, very complicated timeline. I have the row offense and I have two instances. Now, if I just put these in the matrix, or sorry, in the sorter, You'll see that there's you know lots of the word test in each instance and in this first one I've got you know 10 and the second one I've got four so when I'm trying to script for that like counting the word how many times I've got the word test you're gonna get two different results depending on what sort of way you code for labels so if I just go into report mode and press execute you'll see that we've got 2 and 14 so what's the difference when I don't use the word label so show count test where row equals offense I'm just going to get the number of times the word test shows up in the row offense. So there's two instances, both have the word test in them, so I'm going to get the output of two. For this one here, show count label test where row equals offense. So the difference is being just that word label. Show count test, show count label test. So show count label test where row equals offense. It's going to count the total amount of times I have the word label, sorry, count the total amount of times I've got the word test in this row offense. So I've got 14 times the word test, so that's the output I'm going to have. Now this is extremely important for lineup analysis, and when we get to the um, final output window, you'll see why. So this is part two of coding and scripting for lineup analysis. So now we're at part three of coding and scripting for lineup analysis. Now. There's a lot going on in this output window. I've reduced it from the usual full window, which I'll show you at the end. But we've just got the simplistic version to kind of show you and walk you through everything that's going on. Because there's a lot going on in terms of all the relationships between the buttons. And actually the cold key to this window is this button right here. So we're going to start straight off with the scripting with this button. 
Now, variable name. If variable name button name roster01. If button name, so roster01 state equals one, which means if it's a push down, show name, so the name identified with this button ID. So what is roster01? Roster01 is this button up here. So roster01, roster02, roster03, four and five. So if button roster01 is pushed down, rename it the button name of roster01. If not, show counter. So just show the word counter. Number two, name equals uh, name two, button name roster02. So if button roster02 is pushed down, rename the name identified in roster02. Button three, button name roster three. So if singular is pushed down, rename singular. If not, rename counter. Same with four and five. Now you'll realize basically the scripting is just repeating itself and we're just going all the way down. So what happens if roster01 and roster02 are pushed down? Well, with sports code scripting, it always reads top to bottom. So if both of these, you know, if both of these if statements have been executed, it's always going to go for the second one. So if I had, you know, roster01, two, three, four, and five, all, you know, state equals one, all pushed down, it's going to revert to this one down here. It's going to revert to roster05 because of, you know, it's at the bottom. It's at the bottom of the list. It's going to basically read from top to down. And it's going to take the last one. So, for example, if I go roster01, roster02, roster03, it's going to be called singular because that's the last one I've pushed down. Now, if I just push this empty slot, it's just going to go empty, empty, you know, it's just going to go empty. So you go to these buttons to the left of it. What do they say? Again, it's identifying the name of roster01. It's identifying the name of this counter button. So right now you can see it's called singular. So if button roster01 is pushed down, which it currently is, show name. So if darling is pushed down, show darling. If it's not pushed down, show counter. So right now we've got the word singular in this counter button ID slot. So if I deselect uh, darling, it's going to rename itself whatever is in this counter slot which is singular, which it has. Same with salt. If this button is pushed down, rename it what's in this roster02 spot. If it is not pushed down, rename it whatever is in this word counter. So if I deselect salt, it's going to go to whatever is in the counter slot, which is singular. Now if I deselect singular and put salt, they're all going to name themselves salt because they're all basically saying Oh, our button's not pushed down, so we'll rename ourselves what is whatever is in this word counter box, which is salt. Now, obviously, as I said, it's reading it from top down. So if I put now, say, just this empty slot here from roster 5 they're all going to rename themselves from the button of roster 5 except the one that's pushed down, because it's saying, you know, if we're pushed down, rename what's in this slot. Only if it's not pushed down are we renaming itself, you know, whatever's in this counter box. So if I deselect this, it's going to go back to that blank spot. Now I know that's very complicated to understand, there's a lot going on there, but you've seen the scripting on my screen, so you can kind of replicate it if you need to kind of, you know, recreate it in your own windows. Which just takes us to the actual statistical output. So we're just going to start off with the most simplest, you know, output, which is position number. So how many positions have our selected lineup been on the court? So we're just going to read the scripting. Position, button name, home team plus offense. So I'm just identifying the row from which I'm going to get this um, output from. So home team is the button ID of my Rams button here. So Rams plus offense equals Rams offense, which is the name of my row here in the timeline, Rams offense. Then I've got all these slots here. So ID 01 equals button player 01. ID02 equals button player02, 3, 4, and 5. So I'm basically using variables to identify what's in these button IDs. Where are these button IDs? They're down here. So player01 is this box here, player02, 3, 4, and 5. Now since we're just doing positions, we're not really counting anything, so we're just going to go straight to the show. Show count ID01, show count ID02, and 03, and 04, and 05, where row equals Rams offense. So basically show count every time, you know, player 01, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And as we said, we've kind of figured out that whatever there's going to be in those slots is dependent on whatever roster slots we've selected. So if I put darling, sold, and singular, those, you know, button 01, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are going to be different. So 1, 
it's going to be darling, two is going to be salt, three, four, and five are going to be singular. So we're kind of counting it three times. However, when we go back to part two of this video regarding that, you know, label scripting format, when it's, you know, with the word label and without the word label, you know, it's different. So as you can see here in the show count script, we don't have label ID01, label ID02, and label ID03. We've just got and, 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 and. So that means for these three slots here, for four, five, and three, even though they're all called singular, it's only counting it once because we're not using the word label. It's only counting it once. So it's counting darling, it's counting salt, and then it's counting singular. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, my email is in the description below. So basically we're just counting it three times or three different players. So that's just for positions. So if we go to say, for example, two point shots, where there's gonna be, oh, I've got it in report mode, two point shots, it's gonna be, sorry, I'm in field goals, so we'll go to two point shots. So we've just got the couple of variables. So now we do have some counting. So count made, made two, and one, two, three, four, five. So again, it goes back to part one, counting the position result and all the players inside of your position instance. So for example, if I select Darling, um, Salt and Singler again, again, we're just counting the three players because again, I don't have the word and, or sorry, I don't have the word label like I do here. So count label made to and Darling and Salt and Singler where row equals position. Count label made to or label missed to and darling and salt and singular, if that makes sense. Same with like, you know, all the percentages and then all the show buttons. So then when you got to say field goals, again, I clicked it in report mode, so that's not gonna work. So say I got field goals, again, I'm counting May two or May three, so the position result and then the players, darling, oh, Darling, salt, and singular, because again, I'm not using that word label. May two, may three, miss two, and miss three. Darling, salt, and singular. So you can kind of see the pattern. You've just got to get the position result and all the five players. And then from that point, once you've used the variables to identify what you're actually counting, what you're actually identifying, then you can do your new, usual like percentage scripting and show those percentages. So then I've just used my usual percentage script then I can outpoint, uh, output that, output that, and get you know my very fancy outputs. Now, if you look at the usual lineup analysis I have, I've got like all these offensive stats, all these defensive stats, all these position types. I've can even I've even um, added the ability to exclude different players, and I've got all my shot charts. So how do certain lineups use you know from catch and shoot threes from different areas of the court from different team actions. So like once you identify this first simple principle of identifying the position end and the five players on the court and understanding that difference in label scripting, you can get really creative with what sort of lineup analysis you can get. Now again, if you have any questions about this process, my email is in the description below or you can contact me on any of my social media platforms. But hopefully this made a little bit of sense. It doesn't even make sense to me all the time when I'm trying to describe it. It's very difficult to ascribe, but hopefully, you know, it clicked a few, um, it clicked for you in your brain and you kind of see where it's all going. Thank you very much and appreciate you watching.